Good morning. It is my big, big pleasure to be in Tallinn these, these days, and I am grateful, especially to Propatria Institute, for inviting me. We have fantastic cooperation for many years. The Martin Center is a composition of 50 either member foundations or partner foundations, and Propatria Institute is really one of the most active members of our family. So I would like to thank Trevima Veliste, who is the chairman of the Propatria Institute, but also Kaya Willem, who is a director of this organization. And I am very pleased to be to together here with Tune Kelam, who is a very good friend of mine, and he also likes to participate in many events, either in Brussels or in some other cities organized by the Wilfried Mantra Center for European Studies. So, uh, dear friends, uh, uh, it is a real pleasure to, to be here in Tallinn and to speak about a topic which is very dear to my heart, unity, unity of Europe. As it uh, has already been said, I spent many years working on it. And by the end of my second term, my team and me, we secured Slovakia's membership in both in NATO and the EU. And I have fantastic memory on cooperation with Mart Lahr, the former prime minister of this country, strong reformer pushing the country ahead. And if I listen or if I hear the name of the country, Estonia, the first picture in my head is modernization, reforms, e-government, and fantastic future in NATO and the EU family. I, I like Mart Lahr a lot. So without the shadow of a doubt, that was a stepping stone for Slovakia, I'm sure also for Estonia, as well as for all the European countries that we were in the previous century oppressed under communism and joined the EU almost 15 years ago in 2004. The common European value specified in Article 2 of the Lisbon Treaty and our Christian heritage can offer a shared vision for a united and a strong Europe. These are the values in the name of which we opposed communism, and they are still worth fighting for. They make me proud to be a European. To some extent, however, we seem to have lost our way. There appears to be a growing divide between East and West which is undermining the unity of our European Union. It began right after the EU enlargement, when we had the impression the new member states were expected to be silent, yet they made their voice heard. It continued with President Chirac's critic of these states, claiming that they were committing social dumping, although the new member states only tried to develop economically and to catch up with the older members. I was heavily criticized because of introduction of the flat tax, for instance. But thanks to these measures, we can go faster and to develop country very, very successfully, similarly like Estonia. More recently, the effort of the European institutions to en enforce migrants' quotas and to harmonize national tax systems only ex exacerbated the situation. For obvious historical reasons, us, Central and Eastern Europeans, are often, I would say, more conservative than our Western friends. For us to cherish EU institutions, it is important that they are not merely perceived as the vehicle of liberal and progressive values. Conservative and Christian democratic values 
must have place within, within them too. After all, the pervasive advances of progressive liberalism in recent decades are partly to be blamed for the contemporary crisis of values. Liberals, with their agenda, offer a plethora of visions about tolerance, inclusion, and non-discrimination. But they fail to nourish that sense of community and shared historical roots, which alone can foster political unity. This is also true at the EU level, where the recipes often divide Europeans is opposed to uniting them. Today's populism is also a reaction against a certain overreach of progressive liberalism during the past few decades, not least in a realm of political correctness and the support for open borders. Populists built on fear and intimidation, on terror, chaos, and panic. But the sense of security of our citizens has surely plummeted, enabling their rise. Currently, in these days, two opposing and extreme forces are on a quest for power and influence in Europe. Progressives, led by Emmanuel Macron on the one side, and the other, populists, led by Matteo Salvini. They stand and fall together. They meet each other. And the victory of either of them would be detrimental and perilous for the European Union. We must combat both in the name of a Christian democratic middle ground. Europeans are in search of security, and more than anything of a sense of community where our identity as Europeans, our beliefs, and our values can be, uh, can, can be shared. In order to deliver on this, however, we first need to solve some of the most pressing issues that are dividing us. One of them, surely, is the perception that Eastern countries are un ungenerous and do not show any solidarity with the West and the South regarding the migrant crisis. On the other hand, the West needs to respect Eastern countries' sentiment, traditions, experience, culture, <laughs> and understand that all Eastern countries are young, and are young democracies whose cultural traditions were oppressed for decades under communism. It is normal for us to be especially attached to our heritage and our culture, which were so cruelly trumped upon in the recent past. On the other hand, we cannot fail to accept the principle that some form of solidarity on migration is needed. We rightly demand a Western and Southern solidarity to face some of our own challenges. For example, Russia. It means, on the other side, we must be also ready to practice some solidarity of our own. Of course, this can only happen within the framework of con controlled and legal migration and cannot mean that any country should abandon its own culture or heritage or to resign on our traditions. It is essential that East and West compromise and that both sides learn mutual respect. After all, compromise is a backbone of our European unity, our history. 
I now come to the importance of Christianity, so fundamental to the development of our values, culture, and mentality. We, as Christian Democrats, should never forget this basic fact and abandon the fight to keep the Christian heritage alive. There are at least two reasons why the European Christian heritage has still an unquestionable relevance to the integration project. The first is that it was the fundamental agent of unity in our history since the fall of the Roman Empire to at least the French Revolution. Christianity was the principal force that prevented national dynasties and identities to dissolve Europe into its component parts. In other words, for over 14 centuries, Christianity bounded us together. Thanks to Christianity, Europe is more than just a geographical expression divided into different civilizations, unlike Asia, Africa, or America. Thanks to Christianity, Europe became a single civilization. Yes, a civilization with many nations, but still a single civilization. This unique heritage of spiritual and cultural unity, which was absent in all other continents, made European political integration possible and successful. Christianity is not only the backbone of Europe, but also the core of its identity. But Christianity is newly relevant for a second reason. References to the Christian heritage of Europe have emerged in several national discourses as reassuring mark, uh, markers, as reassuring markers of our identity, which is being threatened by globalization and mass migration. Unfortunately, populists captured and reframed these sentiments by taming them with nationalist rhetoric, which goes against the supranational spirit of Christianity and European Christian democracy. But the basic point remains true. Europeans are searching for a common identitarian discourse. Something to hold on to that gives us the security of a shared past. If Christian Democrats are not prepared to offer one such vision that would be compatible with the EU and its common heritage, more malign views will prevail, and they will tear Europe apart. I have a feeling, my friends, that we are at crossroads. We as Christian Democrats, I strongly believe, we have a mission. We need to reaffirm the value of our civilization. We have to promote freedom, unity, but also subsidiarity, the rule of law, and patriotism. We need to provide a new vision that is attractive to all, to big, to small, to older, to younger, to richer, to poorer. But there is no need to reinvent the wheel. This vision is in the DNA of Christian democracy. It is a vision of European Federation based on the principle of subsidiarity, on our shared cultural heritage, and on the protection of our national and regional identities. It is a vision of deepening European cooperation in the areas where no country can cope alone, such as defense and security, foreign policy, the common market, and a single currency. In these areas, we must speak with one voice 
and act effectively. In all other areas, however, it is essential to respect the sovereignty as well as the responsibility of the member states. EU competencies and national competencies must be precisely defined. This will end the current, allow me to say, circus where member states often blame the EU for their own failures and convey the impression that all successes and achievements are their own. At the end, let me repeat this once again, as it is extremely important by my mind. We already have a vision for a truly united Europe. We know that it should build on Christian values, but I believe that also on universal values, such as tolerance, mutual respect, equality of men and women. It should be built also on the principles such as rule of law, federalism, subsidiarity, tradition, or also in the principles of liberal democracy. By my mind, there is no contradiction between promotion of Christian values on one side and liberal democracy principles on the other side. Our task is to spell it out in a clear and compelling way and to champion in throughout our continent. Let's make sure that every citizen, be it Italian, Dutch, Bulgarian, Portuguese, Slovenian, or Estonian, and also a Slovak, and so on, feels proud to be a European, as equally as I am proud to be a European. Many thanks.